Hello everyone, and welcome to this edition of NASCAR's Lost Teams, Bobby Allison Motorsports, 1990-1996. through 1996. Bobby Allison is a former NASCAR Cup Series driver, owner, and champion. He was named one of NASCAR's 50 greatest drivers, as well as being a member of the Hall of Fame. A winner of three Daytona 500s in 78, 82, and 88. And also, he won his NASCAR Cup Series Championship in 1983, along with winning 84 career career wins, tying him with Darrell Walter on the all-time winners list. He was forced to retire in 1988 due to a career-ending crash at Pocono. After taking time away from the sport, Allison decided to reopen his NASCAR Cup Series team, Bobby Allison Motorsports. So, in 1990, he put a number 12 Ray Vestas Brakes Ford on the racetrack. Now, they chose Mike Alexander to drive, but... This is after he had just suffered a horrible crash the past winter in the Chili Bowl in a sprint car race. Still, Alexander made the first seven starts of the 1990 NASCAR Cup Series season. Hus Strickland took Alexander's place behind the wheel of the number 12 Ford full-time for the remainder of the 1990 season. Their best start was 10th in the fall in Charlotte. Now, Alexander's best finish was like 14th. But, um, yeah, Strickland's best start was 10th in the fall in Charlotte, and their best finish was 6th in the spring at Pocono. The team scored two top 10s and ended the 1990 Cup Series season 28th in final points. Now, some may ask why Hutt Strickland was chosen by Bobby Allison to drive for his NASCAR Cup Series team. Now, for a few reasons, mostly due to his talent, but it didn't hurt hurt the fact that Strickland also was kind of turned out to be relations to Allison uh, through marriage. He was married to uh, Donnie's daughter. So Bobby's brother Bobby's brother's daughter. Well, that and um, well as being close close friends with Bobby's son, Davey. For the 1991 Cup Series season, the Bobby Allison Motorsports Group brought back Hutt Strickland to drive the number 12 Maria Vestas Brake Buick full-time, as well as bringing back an excellent crew chief in Jimmy Finney. Their best start was 5th in the spring at Daytona, and their best finish was 2nd in spring at Michigan. Together, Strickland and the team overall scored 3 top 5s and 7 top 10s, finishing 16th in final points. Now, in 1992, Bobby Allison and Hus Strickland make the first 21 starts of the 92 season before finding out that the reason Strickland would not be re-signing with the team was due to the fact that he was planning to make the move over to Junior Johnson and Associates for the 1993 season. So, Allison would end up letting Strickland go early. In those first 21 starts, Strickland's best start was 5th in the spring at Brist Bristol, and his best finish was 7th in the spring at Dover. Overall, in those 21 starts, they scored 4 top 10s. Jeff Purvis took over the driving duties for the following 4 races. His best start was 24th, and his best finish was 22nd, both coming in the fall at Richmond. Then Jimmy Spencer took over at the wheel. So, in those 4 starts that Jimmy Spencer made, his best start was 6th in the fall at Phoenix, and his best finish was 4th twice in the fall at Charlotte and Atlanta. So, overall, the team scored 3 top 5s and 3 top 10s. 3 top 5s and 7 top 10s, if you include the 4 top 10s that Strickland had scored during his run with the team earlier in the season. A strong finish to the 1992 NASCAR Cup Series season. The Bobby Allison Motorsports team hired Jimmy Spencer to drive the number 12 Meineke Muffler Sport full-time in 1993. Their best start was second, and their best finish was second, both coming at Talladega in the spring. Now, overall, this would be the team's best season, scoring five top fives and ten top tens, finishing 12th in final points. At the end of the season, Spencer and Allison parted ways. For the 1994 season, 
The team did not have a permanent sponsor, and Chuck Bown made the first 13 starts of the season. Bown's best start was first in the spring at Bristol. <clears throat> then, his best finish was seventh in the spring at Martinsville. Chuck Bown got injured in race 13 at Pocono, so Tim Seal, he ended up making five starts for the team with the best finish of 33rd. Derek Cope, he made the final 12 races of the season. His sponsor, Straight Arrow, also came on board. His best start was third, and his best finish was seventh, both coming in the season finale in Atlanta in the fall. Cope scored two top tens. Overall, the team scored three top tens in the 1994 season. That, and Ron Zook was also involved with the team. Now, that following season in 1995, Allison brought back Derek Hope to drive the number 12 straight over Arrow Ford full-time. Jimmy Fennig returned as crew chief for the team once again. Their best start was third in the spring at North Wilkesboro, and their best finish was second in the fall at Phoenix. In the Overall, they scored two top fives and eight top tens, finishing 15th in the final point. For what would end up being the team's final season in 1996, Derek Cope would serve as a driver once again. Raining Tail and Straight Arrow left as sponsors following race 10. Badcock Furniture would end up being the team's sponsor for the remainder of the season. Their best start was second twice in the spring at Pocono in Michigan. Their best finish was eighth twice at Rockingham in the spring and Richmond in the fall. Overall, they scored two top tens and finished 33rd in final points. That was the end of Bobby Allison Motorsports at the conclusion of the 1996 season. Bobby Allison Motorsports never did make it to victory lane. They did score one pole, zero wins, 13 top fives, and 39 top tens. And they scored a best points finish of 12th with Jimmy Spencer in 1993. Well, thanks for watching everyone, and take care.